Before we get into this topic, I want to give everybody a warning. We are going to go into some heavy Avengers Endgame spoilers. So if you have not seen the film yet, you need to be aware. We're going to talk about some big spoilers about even the end of the entire movie and the end of the Infinity Saga. So you have been warned. In the MCU, Thanos gathers the Infinity Gauntlets in Infinity War. He snaps his fingers, wipes out half the universe, but he injures his arm. Then we find out in Avengers Endgame a few weeks later that Thanos snapped his fingers again to destroy the Infinity Gems. It winds up almost killing him in the process. Then at the end of the film, Tony Stark uses his gauntlet attached to his armor to again do the snap to wipe out 2014 Thanos' army with the gems from the past and whatnot. And it winds up killing Tony Stark. So the question we're going to talk about here, the discussion is going to be, what if Goku existed in the MCU in that world? If he were to use the Infinity Gauntlet and snap, would he die? Would he survive? Would he be injured? And we're going to talk about some other characters too and kind of when Goku was able to get strong enough to survive the Gauntlet per the rules of the MCU. So joining me on this video for this topic, he has many names, Trailer Drake, Comic Drake, but for this video, we're going to call him Infinity Drake. Hey, Drake, welcome to Geekdom 101. Comic Drake, Trailer Drake, it's Crisis on Infinite Drake's up in here. <laughs> you are new to the channel, but you're not new to YouTube. Everybody make sure you check out his channels. I will leave a link down below. I believe you did a video about the gems at one time. I did. I'm really happy with how that video turned out. I have a lot more information that I want to cover later on in the future, especially now the stones have changed a lot following the inception of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But no, honestly, I'm just really glad to be here. I'm a big fan of your channel and, you know, we're friends. So this is exciting. I was going to do a video with you a while back, but now that the Infinity Saga is done, I want to discuss the Infinity Stones before we talk about the MCU in the main Marvel comic book timeline, the, the Earth 616 Marvel Comics canon, because the rules of the Infinity Stones in the film are not exactly the same as in the comics. So I wanted you to kind of elaborate on that. Yeah, I mean, it was really clear in Endgame that we weren't going to be dealing with the same rules as the mainstream Marvel Earth 616, because one of the big things they actually tried doing in the comics was actually trying to use the stones to destroy the stones, and that wasn't possible. So as soon as Thanos did that, uh, all previous laws in the other universes are just thrown right out the window. But honestly, using the stones isn't generally shown to be harmful in the comics in any real way, shape, or form. You can see people use it all the time to know physical ailments. But one thing that is very important, in my opinion, is that it has been stated that you can't just pick up the gauntlet and use it because it takes an extraordinary mind to do it. That's why a lot of the characters that we've seen using it are, you know, Thanos, Adam Warlock, Black Panther, Reed Richards, even Captain America. It's not just some farmer can pick it up, do a snap. You have to be very powerful of mind. And Tony Stark is a very smart guy, but it is a different rule. Now, when it comes to Goku, for example, because of these rules being different, it's kind of hard to believe that he would have the mental capacity to use the stones because even though Goku is a genius fighter, as far as practical things like with the reality stone and whatnot, it just wouldn't really work in the main Marvel canon. Right, and I'm so glad that you brought up the reality stone because that's actually considered to be the most dangerous out of all the stones. So if you're using them individually, the reality stone is probably the only one where using it by itself is dangerous. It kind of requires the use of the other stones in order to really keep it in check. So I think that might have been where the movie got the idea of harming oneself when using the gems, the stones, whatever you want to call them, and whatever continuity we're dealing with. But yeah, no. Reality Stone, I definitely think Goku probably wouldn't be able to use that one alone. And I feel like Goku, if he had the stones, would probably just like wish for food or something. I don't even oh, think Oh, absolutely. He, right? It would just be something simple. That being said, we're going to be discussing for everybody out there the MCU version of the Infinity Gauntlet, the Infinity Stones. And yes, in the comics, when Thanos snapped, it didn't really hurt him, but in the movie version... When you do the snap, it hurts, and it, it could kill you, and it did for Tony Stark. So could Goku survive the Infinity Gauntlet if he had it, and if he snapped by the rules of the MCU, could he survive? I think the answer is yes, but the question is, when was Goku able to build up enough strength in his body to do it? Now, obviously, Ultra Instinct, Dragon Ball Super, God-level Goku, easy, piece of cake. Yeah, I mean, I we're dealing with an actual god at that point. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, you're fine. But back to Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, I have always believed that Goku became really powerful during the 22nd Budokai and shortly after that during the Piccolo fight because now we're seeing him kind of move past the speed of light and do all these really impressive things. Whereas I believe you stated you believe that 
even then Goku wouldn't be strong enough to survive snapping the stones himself? Well, I mean, I think it's a little bit hard to tell, but I mean, at the very least, I think by the time Goku achieves Super Saiyan 1, that he's, he's good to go. I think that at the very minimum should be the baseline for Goku withstanding this. But also the thing that's probably worth noting is that Tony Stark already was very injured whenever he snapped in Endgame because he had been fighting this entire time. Now, who knows if that would have actually killed him if he was perfectly healthy. But granted, at the same time, we did see that whenever the Hulk snapped, it ruined his entire arm. And the Hulk is the strongest there is. So Exactly. Ah, who knows? Strongest Avenger, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> Thor said in Ragnarok. But here's the question, though. Obviously, one of the reasons why Hulk survived, and this is kind of the way they wrote it, was Gamma rays, and we've never really seen gamma rays in Dragon Ball, although one could make a scientific video explaining how they could exist in Dragon Ball, but that's a different video from their day. Do you think that that has something to do with you? that Goku, because he does not have gamma rays inside of his body, do you think that would affect him? No, I really don't think it, uh, it would be that big a deal. And I think people have to also remember when it comes to just really basic power scaling, when we get to Dragon Ball Z, most of the characters are planetary level as far as main characters go. Piccolo flicked his wrist and blew up the moon. Mm -hmm. Even Roshi was able to blow up the moon in Dragon Ball. So I think people have to remember just how powerful these characters are. Guys like Beerus, Whis, Jiren, Hit easily survived the gauntlet using the gauntlet. They, they could wield the gauntlet. What do you think about some of the Z fighters, some of the lower gods? Like, do you think, for example... Supreme Kai could wield the gauntlet. He's a god, but is he that powerful? I don't know. Well, I think also a big thing we need to think about is, are we talking about if someone could use the gauntlet and survive or survive without any damage? Because I think that that would be a big difference because I think that there are some characters that could probably survive like right on the brink of death, but still manage to, to get it done. So, okay, like let's take Krillin, for example. Now, of course, there's different Krillins. There's Saiyan Saga, Cell Saga, Boo Saga. Do you think he could survive the snap? I feel like Krillin could. I mean, like, I know it's real popular to joke about Krillin dying all the time, but I think he could probably survive the gauntlet. But when, at what point? Like I said, I think that Super Saiyan 1 Goku could absolutely use it. So I think that at the very least, any time that Krillin could be on par with that, that level of Goku, it would make sense. So obviously you believe that Frieza could do it, that the character of Frieza, easily. Oh yeah, I, I mean, especially when we're talking about Golden Frieza. Oh, easily, yeah, for sure. That's a different level of power. Now, what about Majin Buu? Here we have a character Ooh. who has incredible stamina. Yeah, he snaps. It might hurt him, but he can just regenerate. He's good that's to go. The other th yeah, and that's the other thing. And the same thing for Cell. Like, if, And if Piccolo. But he cut his arm off like he did against Cell and just regen, make a new one. You're good right, to go. Right, exactly. And, you know, if Cell can survive from a single drop of blood, I think Boo, also with how, you know, elastic and spongy he is, it, it makes sense. Because, I mean, I feel like Boo kind of works off of cartoon physics uh, a lot more to Toriyama's original comedic take on right. uh, the first Dragon Ball run. But yeah, yeah, no, I, I could see Boo surviving it. I, I mean, I could see Majin Boo surviving. And if we're talking about just Majin Boo, then I think that uh, that Super Boo and Kid Boo could also easily survive. When you, when you say Majin Boo, you're talking about Fat Boo. Yeah, just, uh, just, just general, okay. general Fat Boo. I mean, I'm sure I'm using the wrong terminology. I'm, I'm not up to date on my Kaizenshu stuff. It's all, it's all Majin Boo. But um, now, how do you feel about guys like 17 and 18, you know, because here we have artificial humans, enhanced genetics. Yeah. Maybe they could. I mean, I think they are beyond Super Saiyan power, uh, way beyond. Oh, absolutely. Way I mean, beyond. 17 won the tournament. Yeah, no, not just, I mean, yeah, that's, we're talking about even, we're talking about Dragon Ball Z 17 and 18. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I mean, dude, 18 put Vegeta in a damn hospital pretty much, right, essentially. So I feel like she could survive. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be a technology thing because Tony Stark was was had that nanotech armor for the Iron Man suit. I think it was Mark 85. So I don't think that would affect the snap at all. I think 17, 18, they could probably survive. What do you think? I mean, I know there's a lot of misconceptions around the androids, but could they use it in the first place? Do you need to have a like an organic sentient mind? And I, I know that they're, that they're they modified have one, but they're right. modified. Yeah, right. And so would that would that itself negate being able to use it? Because, you know, the Soul Stone being one of them. Or maybe like what could happen is when they use it, it could somehow damage their cybernetic implants. Like maybe if they use it, they could like end up short circuiting the, the, whatever they have inside of them, whatever their, their cells are or whatever, you know? Yeah, it's so hard without knowing like a lot of the exact science. And it's really hard because we have less rules in the MCU about the Infinity Gauntlet and the, and the Infinity Stones. So it's it's so hard to to go off of that. But yeah, I mean, it really comes down to the whole debate of like, do the androids, do they have souls? Right, yeah, that well, they do have souls because 
you know, 17 came back to life um, yeah, yeah, when he yeah. died. So that, I guess that, that is true. He would. Um, and they are human. So they do have souls. Now, here's the question. The one that pops in my head, of course, is characters like Mr. Satan, like King Choppa, like people like that. Um, here we have regular humans. They don't know how to use key. We could even talk about Videl here for a second. But Mr. Satan is a very, very strong and powerful regular human. He did win the 24th Budokai. He's the strongest non-key user. Could he survive the snap if he's healthy? Man, I don't, I don't think so. Because, like, okay, first of all, think about this. Uh, mm -hmm. We know in the MCU that Captain Marvel alone isn't enough to beat Thanos. Right. I think, that, I think that's pretty clear. If we look at, I guess, power scaling a little bit, we know that Thanos is better than Captain Marvel. So we need to try to find a comparison to Captain Marvel in Dragon Ball. Uh, that's with a lot of people. Level. Right, and that, that's, a, that's a lot of people. But <laughs> I feel like Mr. Satan is clearly below the level of a Captain Marvel. If Thanos can do it, Captain Marvel might be able to do it. I feel like, like, Hercule really couldn't. But you mentioned that Tony Stark, had he been healthy, may have survived. I mean, we will uh, never possibly. know. Possibly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But based on apples to oranges, but, you know, Mr. Satan is, true, yeah. is a trained fighter. He, you know, with a very in-shape body, especially in the Boo Saga and before that, I, that's the question I'm kind of posing. Now, what about Videl? Here we have someone who knows how to use key to fly. She can't really use key blast. Could, do you think she could survive snapping with the gauntlet? Yeah, I feel like Videl has a much higher chance than Mr. Satan. Because, I mean, also, like, once you start getting into key stuff, that very clearly augments your physical strength and body as well. I mean, Goku isn't super jacked. I mean, like, yeah, he's incredibly muscular, but, I mean, body mass-wise, I mean, Mr. Satan is clearly bigger. But all the specialized training that Goku has gone through his his body is able to fall, to perform far beyond the peak human level. I mean, granted, he is Saiyan, but I feel like the key does bring a lot into it. I mean, also, again, we're looking at things like the Soul Stone, which I feel key. The Mind Stone, too. The Mind Stone, right? Yeah. Now, what about Roshi? Here we have a guy who's superhuman, moon destroying guy, did really well in Terminator Power. I that's a tricky one because I I don't know. He does seem stronger than than appearance can be deceiving when it comes to him. Oh, and he can buff up instantly. I know. And way bigger than, than Mr. Satan, too. He's probably about the size of Hulk, so I wonder... I think he probably... I feel like with Roshi, my opinion, he would probably be injured, because he's also an old man, but yeah. I think he would survive. I think he would be injured, though. Yeah, and Roshi would find some ancient martial art technique or something that, that his sister hooked him up with, and he would find some crazy way to get around it. Right, right. So overall, I think that we've pretty much come to an agreement that Goku at some point, probably in late Dragon Ball, early DBZ. You said Saiyans. You, you said Namek Arc. Honestly, I feel like he could probably do it at Kaioken. Yeah, I, after he trained with with. with uh, Actually, yeah? that's interesting though because Kaioken it, it it is physically taxing on Goku. I I don't know could if he survived the the toll that he's already taking on that form and the additional strain of the gauntlet. Well, Kaioken one or Kaioken times three because Kaioken times one he seemed to be able to do pretty easily, but when he got to times three is when he got all jacked up. I, I feel like if we're doing something as big as using the Infinity Gauntlet, then you'd have to go at least times three. Yeah. Okay. So, but then you feel like maybe if he snapped, he would probably burn himself like he like like he did in super when he had the, right. the body yeah but he would probably still survive you think maybe yeah i mean I if know. he can survive super kaioken blue times 20 or whatever he ended up doing i if he can survive that i feel like he could probably survive using the gauntlet let us know in the comments when do you think goku was strong enough to wield the gauntlet in the mcu rules because in the marvel rules if goku got focused maybe he could use it in the marvel comics if he got focused but like you said he's not his mind, his mind's all about fighting, not really about being focused. I mean, one thing, and one thing we should also bring up too is the fact that Thanos is, um, a lot of times he loses because of his own doubt, his own, his own, he ends up beating himself. So that didn't happen in the film, but, uh, which I think it would have been cool if it did, but it's just different rules. But we're talking about the MCU here. Any final thoughts? Well, no, I mean, I think we've been more than thorough with all of this. I think that if anybody has any idea of what other characters can, can wield the gauntlet, like Gohan, clearly, uh, you know, in terms of physical, mental, everything. Uh, but yeah, what about some of the, the more obscure characters? I'd like to know what people that are a little bit more versed in the minutia of Dragon Ball have to say. Yeah, I think Gohan probably, I would say, after Frieza, I would say it, during the Android saga, before he even went Super Saiyan, he probably could wield it. Okay, before we go, I just thought of a new one. What about GT Goku as a kid? Here we have a really strong, he's really powerful, but he's also small and has 
somewhat of a weaker body. I think he could, but I don't know. He couldn't even get his hand on the glove. Maybe not. Yeah, I couldn't even. It wouldn't even fit right in. But maybe it's one of those adjustable gloves, like the ones that uh, that Tony made. Remember how to adjust the whole yep, arm? Yep, that is true. That now, could I, work. I feel like GT Goku could do it. I mean, if if we're saying that uh, that Frieza Saga Goku could, then GT Goku very easily could. Even with the smaller body, is what even with the with the smaller body. I mean, I right. I mean, clearly, I don't think shape and body size is everything for this. I agree with that, but I wanted to clarify for the audience. So, all right, thanks everybody. Thank you, Drake, and we'll talk to y'all in the next one.